Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our re-engineering the chess classic series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and really excited to uh, to bring you this game. It's uh, a game of David Janowski's against Emmanuel Lasker and it was played in Cambridge Springs 1904 and the game itself is totally bananas and the uh, variations that the engine finds are just absolutely amazing. Well I hope I haven't oversold it let's have a little look how this game started. So uh, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, knight f6, bishop b5. It's the um, the four knights, maybe done to avoid uh, Lasker's Berlin defence. Um, actually, uh, Janowski, just like Tarash, actually, uh, um, really enjoyed putting the knight on c3 in the sort of uh, e4, e5 openings. Uh, yeah, I mean, nowadays it's, uh, it's almost... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, automatic really to play, you know, knight d2, f1, g3. But uh, yeah, Janowski was uh, was very keen on knight c3, e2, g3. And uh, well, we'll probably have a look at, uh, at a game that he uh, won against uh, Karl Schlechter as well, where he played a, a similar idea. Um, now, there are many uh, variations against this. Rubinstein came up with knight d4, which I think is uh, definitely thought to be uh, uh, the best equaliser against this line. Bishop b4. Uh, Janowski had a lot of games in this line and played this line very, very well in actual fact. Um, Lasker played the interesting move um, bishop c5 and uh, he, Janowski, reacted uh, in the sharpest way, kind of as he always did, you know, really uh, he sees a challenge, he just goes for it. And um, well, you know, we're going to see that um, this sort of approach, to be honest, I think it had quite a bit of success against uh, Emmanuel Lasker. I mean, putting Lasker away after that was not easy. But I think uh, Janowski was, uh, was getting uh, Lasker in trouble in the opening on a very large number of occasions. So knight takes c5 was played. And after knight takes c5, we go d4 here. Uh, and Lasker replied with bishop d6, which was the, uh, the opening theory uh, at the time. Uh, the engine suggests uh, throwing in a6 first, um, bishop b2, bishop d6. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, Lasker didn't want to do that. Um, there's a you know, concrete reason for that, because he wanted to have the move c6, attacking the bishop on b5 later. But uh, the nice point about playing a6 is that, um, well, obviously, there's no more pin along the, uh, the a4, e8 diagonal. So black can play you know, moves like d7 to d6 quite quickly. Um, but bishop d6 is pretty decent. And now a move, when I first saw this, uh, this idea when I was a little kid, I was just amazed. It, uh, you know, it was really something, oh, look at this, amazing. Because white doesn't take back on e5, white plays the move f4. Ah, amazing. And uh, the point is, of course, when the knight moves away, we've got e5 and we're just winning a piece back. It uh, feels unfair to me always that you're only winning your piece back, you know, and not, uh, not actually winning two pieces somehow. But here Lasker had to make a crucial decision and as so often against uh, Janowski, uh, yeah, Lasker got a bit uh, confused and actually made a very bad choice here. Um, knight c6 had actually been played in a game um, Marco against Gunzberg in 1901 at Monte Carlo. And it's definitely the best uh, idea. I mean, the point is that after e5, bishop b4, ef, queen f6, um, the queen and the knight are combining against the pawn on d4. So, um, yeah, that's already putting some pressure um, on, the, uh, on the white position. And also, well, as we're going to see, the knight on c6 is nice and safe. You know, d5 is not really causing the knight any problems, something like knight d4 at the very least. But um, uh, as we'll see with the knight on g6, it's very exposed to f4 to f5. Um, so this would have been uh, perfectly fine. Um, uh, the engine line was uh, a3, and then, for example, bishop takes c3, d5 castles bishop f5 something like that you know perfectly decent for um, for black but Lasker went to uh, knight g6 and now e5 happened and uh, actually the engine's already giving white a very big advantage which uh, well just shows you how uh, how confused uh, Lasker got here um yeah Lasker played uh, c6 here and now uh, quite a crucial moment in actual fact because uh, the engines point out that e takes d6 takes queen e2 check King f8 and f5 is extremely strong. I mean, basically the problem is is that this knight um, is um, is just going to get caught. I mean, if you, you can go to h4 um, if you want, but um, what was the idea? I think castles was simply the idea, and then uh, we're going to have bishop g5 coming in um, or g3 or whatever, just attacking the knight. 
So, I mean, the engines were looking to, you know, to give back material, for example, player move like b6, but after takes, takes, bishop g5. I mean, white's obviously doing really well here. You know, uh, black's um, uh, pieces are rather disorganized. Weaknesses, you know, nice uh, open lines for the white pieces. Uh, and the engines were actually, uh, you know, winning this. I sort of expected to be a slight clear advantage for white, but yeah, somehow the engines seem to be really making it uh, uh, count for white there. So that was a big... Uh, opportunity for Janowski already, you know, already on move nine. Um, he played the move bishop c4, and um, the engines don't like that at all. After this, they think that um, that uh, uh, black is better. Um, why is that? Well, we go bishop c7, ef6, queen f6, and uh, the basic problem is that black's going to play d5. And uh, well, you know, as long as you can stop white from playing f4 to f5, then well, having the pawns on d4 and f4 is not that great. Um, some very weird lines here from the engines, I have to say, but um, yeah, in the end, they always believe that uh, that white was better. Uh, they don't like what Janowski did uh, in the game, but what Janowski did in the game, that was really showing Lasker what uh, Janowski thought of him and uh, what Janowski wanted to do to him. Because after castles, uh, Lasker played uh, d5, very obvious, you know, just play that move. Um, and uh, well, uh, Janowski played a move that Dragon also chose once. He played the move bishop takes d5 and uh yeah i mean incredibly courageous line here just sacrificing the piece you're not letting uh, black get castled or anything like that you're just going for it full tilt so after takes knight takes d5 black has to make a decision obviously what's happened is that uh, well white's got tempi now we're attacking the queen and the knight and you've also got uh, a check against the king so king is reasonably likely to um uh yeah, to um, uh, to get a bit into trouble and uh, to have to move, maybe black stop castling. Um, yeah, I was a little bit surprised after queen d6. I mean, expected rookie one check somehow, but um, you know the engines just think king f8, c4, bishop e6, um, takes takes d5, um, and then bishop d7. And uh, yeah, I mean, white's got compensation here. I mean, you, you've got two uh, good pawns for the uh, for the piece. The black king's awkward. You know, the the knight on g6 isn't particularly helping to um, to enable to get the king active. But obviously, you know, black is a, a piece up here. It's a fairly speculative sacrifice from white, but still, you know, reasonable uh, chances for compensation. I think um, what Yanoski did was play the move queen e2, and uh, well. Yanovsky suggested king f8. That was what uh, Yanovsky wanted. Um, but I'm not sure about this move. I mean, um, you take, take, you play f5. And after knight h4, you play f6. And yeah, again, you know, uh, well, the king's on a dark square. There's some weak dark squares. You've got this dark square bishop, knight on h4. Black's development, not great. It's speculative for white, but it's it's definitely something, you know, and uh, in a practical game, not easy to deal with. And that's what Janowski was going for, simply, you know, uh, put the great Lasker under pressure. Let him show what a good defender he is. Um, you might see, uh, if you really put him under pressure, that he's uh, not as amazing as he's made out to be. So um, King f8, uh, probably not the best. Knight e7 uh, is a good move from, uh, from Lasker, I think, and uh, just challenging that, uh, that knight. So um, rookie one played by uh, uh, Janowski. Again, uh, c4 was um, was possible. You know, that would also be possible. I mean, the idea is you're going to play bishop d2 to play uh, bishop b4. And then you're going to play rook a e1 after. And um, yeah, I mean, actually, I, I got a bit confused with this, I have to say, because uh, this was the engine line. So um, c4, bishop d8, bishop d2. So um, if you go castles, we go bishop b4, just winning the piece back. You've got three attacking this one. But the engine's got this clever idea, queen e6. So you just uh, put the queen temporarily on that uh, e-file just to nudge the queen away, and then you can castle. And of course, you've also got away from this diagonal, so bishop b4 is not gaining a tempo anymore. But after rook e1, queen d7, bishop b4, um, the engines wanted to play this. Takes, takes, knight f6. And, you know, well, bishop c5 from white or bishop b4 for straight away doesn't really matter. Black's playing b5. And I was looking at it, I was thinking, well, you know, I mean, after all, um, OK, black's got two bishops, uh, but white's got a bishop too. Um, basically, you've got two pieces for rook and two pawns. And I've got these two pawns. I mean, if you just asked me to assess this, I would say white is slightly better in this position. And yet the engines just seem to feel that it's, um, it's, it's actually very much better for black actually almost winning. 
And uh, I think this is really one of those situations where it's all about calculation. And I, I'm not really sure you could uh, ever guess this uh, as a human. For example, you know, after b3, they want to play bishop a6, bishop c5, bishop b6. And um, what just tends to happen is that, um, yeah, these pawns just end up being too weak. You just can't seem to hold them. And white just end, seems to end up getting uh, lots of weaknesses. There's, uh, if you go c takes b5, for example, a6, sort of Benko, Benko style there, um, and then rook e5, a takes b5. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you go something like queen b5, I just take, take, and I go bishop a6, so you can't take that one back. Um, but rook d1, bishop b7, queen takes b5, we just give up that pawn. And then, yeah, somehow, you know, this was always uh, happening somehow. Uh, you know, the engines were just somehow creating threat so bishop b6 is coming in now bishop b6 now knight g4 and you sort of think well i couldn't have guessed this was going to happen you know all this time ago but somehow it seemed to happen every single time in the engine game so clearly there's a huge amount of dynamic potential in there that um you know just looking at it um just uh, intuitively just does not you know, I don't, just don't see that in the position. And I, I still don't, even though uh, I've just got a, a whole row of, uh, of engine wins with black. So, yeah, very tricky position, this. But I think, you know, that, that also shows the, um, you know, how clever Janowski was to go into this and, well, the challenge that was facing Lasker. But for a while, he does uh, pretty well. Rookie won. Uh, yeah, Janowski's, you know, he doesn't want to play a quiet move like c4. He wants to keep it moving uh, somehow. And now bishop uh, d8 from uh, from Lasker. Now, I think that bishop e6 here was just possible um, because um, if you go something like knight e7, um, I can actually just take with a king here. And obviously, uh, f5, um, there's just queen takes h2 check. So, you know, that is act that bishop e6, very sensible move, was actually possible. The engine was looking at queen, b queen b5, king f8, knight e7, queen e7. Uh, but the key point is here that if you go d5, which looks, you know, really good, then queen d7 is the resource to uh, to defend. And uh, if I go queen d7, then bishop b6 check uh, is kind of, uh, you know, very, very unpleasant there. So, yeah, you know, uh, bishop e6 was really a very good move for Lasker. And I think that would have kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, stopped the attack in its tracks, really. Um, but, um, well, Laska played uh, bishop d8. It's not a bad move, but, uh, well, you know, uh, Janowski just keeps on going and plays uh, c4. So here black's got to decide. I mean, you've got to unpin, uh, that's clear. Um, and either you're going to play king f8 or you're going to play the, the idea that Laska played in the game f6, king f7. And, uh, well, Marshall and Pillsbury uh, preferred king f8. And uh, I think that is probably probably right because uh, well as we'll see playing f6 actually just gives white more attacking channels you know involving uh, this diagonal for example so king f8 bishop d2 and then a5 similar to what Lasker did in the game but just with uh, the king out of the way um, and um, yeah after a5 well the engines were looking at takes takes and then something like yeah I don't know bishop c3 bishop f5 Again, some speculative compensation there. You know, these two pawns, this king weak, not not easy to get that king uh, into play. But still, you know, I mean, uh, black is a piece up. You know, uh, um, all the engine games were ending in wins there. But f6, you know, Lasker's got to make choices as black. And, uh, well, with Janowski just uh, keeping pressure on, not playing maybe the very best moves, but playing good moves, you know, all moves with purpose. Uh, yeah, Lasker does start to go wrong. So bishop d2. Uh, played by uh, Janowski and uh, quite interesting actually the uh, the engines actually want this move which is really nice f5 and uh, what's the idea of it the idea is to play uh, the move bishop f4 you know, so you're just going to develop your bishop uh, in that way and I mean it's it's pretty powerful I mean if you go something like you know king f7 just try and get out of it I go bishop f4 I go queen h5 takes and rook e4 and I'm just you know I'm just going to triple on the uh, on the e file you can go queen f5 but then I go queen e2 and, uh, you know, this is getting really dangerous now. Um, you know, black's not developed and I'm already careering through on the uh, on the e-file there. So, um, yeah, I mean, after f5, you can play, well, castles, actually, funnily enough, was the uh, uh, the best move, according to uh, to the engines. They just wanted to give back this piece, uh, grab a pawn and uh, claim equality, you know. Uh, so after f6, f5, very, very strong there, you know, and uh, um, yeah, you know, just uh, so it's clear, you know, I mean, it's 
clear that this position is not not at all easy. Bishop d2 was uh, Yanovsky's idea. We've seen it uh, uh, before and uh, a pretty decent idea. a5 and now he punted queen h5 check. And um, yeah, it's maybe not the best move, uh, this one. Um, actually, what uh, the engines want is to take and play c5. And um, yeah, if you go queen takes d4, king h1, I go rook d1, and then this move f5 again. Yeah, I'm threatening bishop to f4 again. So the engines want to go castles, give the piece back, and uh, you know try and go for uh, for equality there. Um, but um, yeah, Yanoski played queen h5 check, and it, you know there's a, it's a really cunning idea uh, behind it, um, into which Laska falls and then panics and then falls even further. Um, King f8 was uh, Lasker's suggestion after the game, and um, uh, yeah, this is most likely better. Um, the interesting, uh, and the reason why it's an interesting idea, well, I will show you, but you've got to see the continuation in the game first. Because uh, he blocks with g6, and then Janowski flicks in c5, and this one's a little bit of a nasty one. So uh, you can't take on d5 because of queen d5, that's it was the idea of giving that check. Um, and uh, obviously if you go gh then I've got cd and the e7 knight is uh, going and uh, well we've got to decide where we're going to put that queen um, could put it on um, um, well d7 looks just stupid we've got knight f6 check um, we've got uh, queen c6 or we've got queen a6 which was uh, Lasker's choice um, so yeah Lasker's choice queen a6 a little bit odd in a way um, but I think that what Lasker was was thinking about was well I, I might be able to get some sort of counterplay with queen d3 you know so uh, and maybe even come round you know defend like that so I think that's what he was aiming for with queen a6 but it's actually a very bad move um, so um, uh, there were two better moves <laughs> funny enough queen d7 is the engine move I said knight f6 but then black just plays king f7 and uh well, you know, I mean, um, you can play, take on d7, g8, knight e5, king f6, or king g7. And, um, well, I mean, white's got three pawns for the piece, but black's got two bishops, some nice uh, light squares. Uh, the engines were, were drawing these uh, these games in um, in general. Well, Stockfish was winning it, and uh, and uh, as, as, uh, as black, and then drawing it as white. But um, there were a lot of draws in here as well. So, you know, for engines, it could probably draw. I think for human players, this would be a tough one to hold. We don't hold those sort of positions very well, really. Um, Tarash suggested queen c6, and I think he's, you know, he's, he's reasonably uh, correct there. I mean, uh, knight e7, bishop e7, queen e2, we go queen d7, and then we're just going to try and get out of, uh, of the pin. Still some danger for, um, for black, but um, yeah, again, you are a piece up after all. Um, after queen a6, then um, uh, it's starting to get very, very serious indeed, and uh, queen h6 was, uh, was played, and... Um, I mean, actually, all of a sudden, blacks, you know, you're just pouring through here. And um, uh, the first threat is simply rook takes e7 check. And after bishop e7, there's knight c7. So that's already great. And, well, you can sort of see why um, the queen a6 was not great. I mean, if the queen was on c6, we'd be taking that knight. Queen on a6 is not doing anything about the, uh, you know, the immediate knight threat there. So that's not great. The other big problem is that if you go king f7, and I think this was what Lasker had missed. The knight e7 simply is strong. Sometimes you just miss simple captures. I, I, I'm sure I've said this many times in uh, in these um, uh, in these uh, uh, videos that I do, and I've, I've said it many times in lectures. So I do apologise. But you know, I once did a lot of work on Tal's uh, attacks. You know, trying to improve my attacking play, and um, I did come to the conclusion that um, instead of doing complicated stuff, Tal either attack stuff check stuff or took stuff that was what most of his attacks were uh, were dealt with and it's all about gaining time all the time if you're taking stuff the opponent has to take back then it's your move again you know and uh, well this is just simply very powerful you just take off queen g7 and you're just completely winning you know you're picking up this rook and then the whole queen side as well so actually Lasker had to play bishop e6 and now 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 um Janowski missed an amazingly good chance to uh, to win the game here but uh, it's quite interesting that you know um, a lot of commentators didn't actually see this win which is actually very simple um, Chigorin uh, said knight b6 being brilliant as he was the idea being bishop b6 of course rook e6 but actually king f7 is um, is uh, a little bit annoying with the idea that after rook e6 you can play this move knight f5 and you chase the queen back and then you can take here and queen b3 
we just sort of uh, escape round here. I mean, it's still very, very dangerous for uh, for Black, but Black is kind of surviving. You know, it's not uh, finished yet. Um, in his annotations in a French um, magazine, uh, Yanovsky said that Queen G7 was best. But I'm not really sure that's clear. Here, actually, you know, uh, Lasker's idea really comes into its own because here the Queen gets active. We go Queen F5 and, uh, well, you know, Black's going to maybe swap off Queens or attack uh, on G2. You know, this is decent for Black. It's not uh, not bad at all. Uh, but what uh, Tarash points out in Die Moderne Schach Party uh, is um, that White could simply grab something, Knight E7, and after Bishop E7 just play D5. And... Um, yeah, well, there we are. <laughs> we're just uh, we're just winning our piece back there. Um, if you go bishop takes d5, then takes takes queen g7 is um, is very unpleasant. Um, and um, yeah, I mean you take check, take check, and go rook e1 to stop queen e2. I mean it's not um, uh, completely hundred uh, percent easy clear. You know, I mean black does have some sort of counterplay, um, but it's pretty good. I mean it's two pawns, and uh, you know, well the black king isn't great either, of course. Um, if you play um, bishop takes c5, uh, check, then we just go king h1, we go rook e6, and then we go bishop takes a5 here, you know, and, uh, well, we're going to end up with uh, with an extra pawn at least, you know. Um, actually, uh, the engines were tending to emerge with uh, two extra pawns, and black again has got activity and counterplay, but, um, you know, the engines were finishing off quite nicely. Bishop b6 was a very nice move there, I thought. Uh, you know, you can cover your king with bishop g1 and you're still attacking the a7 square, for example. So that's a very nice idea. So, yeah, I mean, knight e7 was really a, a simple way to play, just guaranteeing an advantage. But um, Yanovsky sort of rolled the dice, as he always did. Knight takes f6 check. Uh, king f7 and to be honest he played a move that looked very strong uh, to start with um, actually uh, Hoffer and Slechter um, recommended the move d5 which I think is actually the best one there though it's not at all obvious I mean after bishop d5 rook e7 takes knight d5 I wouldn't immediately say that, that this position for um, for white is, is absolutely fine I mean I seem to be uh, uh, you know um, I've got a rook on a1 uh, I've got some pieces hanging and all that but um, yeah, uh, bishop c3 was uh, bishop d4 takes takes and then f5 is the uh, is the engine solution and then here we take rook f1 <laughs> crazy moves and uh, the engines think that this is actually just equal king d8 we're supposed to cut the king off and we'll get some sort of uh, check somewhere but I mean this is really crazy right I mean I I don't know I, I can't uh, I can't fathom it just like that you know um, so what um, Yanovsky did was very natural knight e4 and it looks I think you know from a distance it looks um, incredibly promising because you've got double threats there you've got knight d6 check here and knight g5 the big problem is that black can uh, can cover it uh, can cover all those things by moving his knight and um, Lasker played the move knight f5 but this is where it starts getting a bit crazy, really, because the engines point out that there was another move here, uh, which doesn't seem to have been pointed out by any commentator. As far as I can see, um, and I've, I've looked at quite a few sources, but uh, knight g8. Knight g8. Well, <coughs> how are we getting this queen out? Because, uh, well, the move that the only move that, uh, that I saw, knight g5 check in here, you know, knight f6. Yeah, Black's kind of got control. I mean, he's going to get entrenched on these light squares. Nice pressure along here. You know, these games were ending in wins for Black. You know, Black's really got good control and this bishop is going to be passive forever. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I was thinking, yeah, well, that's that's pretty clear, isn't it? But uh, the engine, uh, cool as you like. Maybe, uh, you know, just, um, uh, you know, <laughs> pause the video. Try and work out if you can see what the engine wants. Because the engine wants this move, Queen G5. Can you believe this? I mean, after takes, takes, it's simply a whole queen. It's a whole queen, this, uh, this position. Um, but yeah, there are some problems. Um, the big problem, first of all, is if king f6, that's what you want to play, you know, keeping control of the e6 uh, bishop. We just go d5 here, and um, uh, we're going to go bishop c3, and we're going to pile in with our pieces. So if you know if you're going to go d5 anyway you might as well king, go king e7 and then you know just run for the hills like that so d5 and then the engine's playing queen c4 knight takes e6 here so okay we're covering c5 like this if queen d5 we've got knight c7 check but black plays king d7 and i will remind you that it's 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 um 
uh, knight and three pawns for the queen this position a whole queen and it's not like you know black's got masses of moves to before he can develop right i mean he's going knight e7 or, or knight f6 right um so c6 check and this is quite a cunning little idea it's freeing this c5 square for the knight b takes c6 and bishop c3 and um yeah it's one of those interesting uh, things you often see it with sacrifice material you know that uh, you sort of think wow i'm huge amounts of material up but um you know here white's threatening to take the rook and if he takes the rook then he'll have actually rook bishop and pawn for the queen and all of a sudden that sounds oh you know that's that's not so bad is it so yeah therefore you really do want to try and keep your material so knight e7 very obvious and now d takes c6 check and uh yeah i mean this is this is kind of total craziness um you know if if knight c6 we've got ideas like rook d1 check um and rook c1 i'm not 100 percent sure that it's in, in in this position uh you know then we'll have bishop takes h8 very hard to uh to hold all your uh material um king d6 was what the engines wanted to do and then we go knight g5 we're still uh you know a piece down but we've got threats like you know knight f7 uh, check uh, if the queen moves away knight e4 we've got rook d1 check so many threats and um, the point is if you lose a bit of material then you know black's white's well, got a reasonable amount you know if you win that knight for example you'll have knight bishop and uh, and a couple of pawns for the queen and still some threats against the black king i mean this is the uh, rook c8 check and then rook c rook c1 this was the main engine line queen c1 and then rook c1 and the engine thought that this was uh, approximately equal somehow um yeah i mean you're um you've got two pawns this one's hanging as well but uh yeah black will uh will have some activity as well so yeah probably black's going to hold this but yeah you know it just looks like uh like this is kind of a bit better for white somehow queen g5 queen g5 a whole queen down well queen and the queen for three pawns down and the engines just uh you know just playing nice and positionally there and this is not the last time you're going to see this sort of theme well i would wonder if uh, yanovsky would have found uh, queen g5 but uh laska played knight f5 and um uh yanovsky retreated with queen h3 the engines don't like knight f5 half as much why simply because of the move g4 um, and this knight is getting chased away and of course you know if the knight gets chased away then d6 is uh, is hanging so Laska played bishop e7 and um, Janowski played uh, an interesting move here quite a calm move um, the engine wants to play takes takes here and uh, why does it think this is strong it thinks this is strong because it is going to get in g4 and then when that knight moves away the f file is uh, is for the engine basically so um for example what do we have here queen c4 um rook e4 queen c2 rook e2 bishop d5 rook f2 rook c1 g4 and we're getting our piece back you know very very murky here i mean this is an amazing one i couldn't believe this you know just say uh the engine says draw <laughs> you know after all this uh crazy stuff but the basic idea um you know not getting too caught up in these variations which are impossible for a human to calculate is that playing the pawn to g5 it stops black from going h5 and just means that black white can go g4 and then yeah this knight is just gonna you're gonna win this knight back somehow it's just how much you know trouble black can cause with this queen bishop c3 is quite a nice move i mean you, you know you're sort of threatening d5 you're protecting it um you know maybe we're going to bring the rook into d1 it's not bad at all and after bishop d5 uh Janowski had his plan um which was to play g4 um uh, actually the engines really want you to play h5 in this position to stop you from going g4 and then well you know white can play this but uh yeah this is actually pretty nice for um for black you know two bishops um pieces are heading to nice squares somehow and uh white's got two pawns but it's not really quite enough i mean uh, the engines were winning these as uh, as black I mean Lasker's move bishop d5 is very reasonable and I think he had a you know he definitely had an idea behind it because after g4 he wanted to play knight h4 and at first at first sight this looks you know very strong um because uh yeah I mean if this knight moves away then um uh well you know the knight's coming into f3 here and uh, we'll give black a few moves and uh yeah you know white's position is collapsing completely but well this is a you know the sort of uh, you've got to act now because your position is collapsing completely that was a situation tailor-made for david yanovsky and um he went knight d6 check and here Lasker really mixed things up because um well i mean bishop d6 we go queen h4 
and uh, this was actually turning out quite nicely for White. Um, quite dangerous, you know. Um, rookie five f five. You know, we've got we've got rook f one coming in here, and uh, yeah, you know, got to be very careful with this bishop because then we've got d five. Yeah, black was holding, but it was um, it wasn't pleasant at all. But uh, Lasker went king f eight, which was quite a brave move. And the idea is uh, simply, um, well, I want to have knight f3 check in and then I'm going to take on d6 and you're going to be completely blocked. But yeah, Janowski played rook takes e7. And after knight f3 check, well, um, I was wondering whether you could play uh, king f2 in this position and try and play queen h6. But the engines weren't amazingly keen. You just go rook e8, king d8. That wasn't uh, Janowski's idea. His idea was the brilliant move queen takes f3 and bishop takes f3. So there we are, we looked at the position where um, uh, the engine sacrificed the queen and just had three pawns. Well, here Janowski's got a piece and, uh, and three pawns, but uh, yeah, very complicated position here. How are you gonna do this? I mean, black's big problem, uh, or white's big problem rather, is that his king is pretty exposed. So, um, you know, you've definitely got to deal with uh, the queen and the bishop, you know, getting close to this, uh, to this king. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Janowski went wrong at the very first step here. Um, I think if he found the next move, it could have been very interesting because um, Janowski played rook f7 check. Um, and the big problem with this move is that um, now when black retreats his bishop uh, to d5, which you know blocks in this, um, this, um, this bishop on c3, um, then um, everything's happening with tempo. You know, so the bishop's taking on d5 and attacking that um, that rook on f7, and the bishop coming back to d5 is it's a really brilliant defensive square. It covers you know an awful lot of threats there. So actually, the move that uh, White had to play was rook a1. I don't think this has ever been analysed, to be honest. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, this phase of the game, uh, Tarash in uh, Di Modena Shack Party, uh, he uh, Partai, he um, he just uh, sort of uh, says, ah, you know, uh, oh, pa party, party, sorry. Sorry, Michael. Sorry, <laughs> I got corrected on my German pronunciation. Now I'm saying it wrong again. But um, um, yeah, no, it, it's. Um, uh, I don't think it's ever been analysed. You know, Tarash just ignores it completely. But yeah, this is really, really dangerous. So after Queen C6, actually we can just go Rook F7, King G8, and if we want, we just go Rook G7 check. And uh, the big idea being King G7, we've got D5 check. Yay! That's the idea. So um, after uh, rook g7, uh, king f8, yeah, rook f7, that's just perpetual. You know, that's just um, uh, a draw there. Black could play more ambitiously and play bishop d5, you know, just stop the rook from coming to f7. Uh, but now white plays the move f5, and uh, this is actually really, really dangerous because uh, what white's threatening is just f6 to f7 and then rook e8 check. You know that's basically what he's uh, what he's looking for. He's just actually playing to 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 uh, to queen this um, this f pawn, um, and this is not easy to stop. Um, H5 was the uh, the engine move, and here we're we're looking at variations that, uh, well, let's be honest, I I just don't really understand, right? So um, you play f6. Uh, now what I do understand is that uh, if H takes g4, we've got rook e8 checkmate. That's that's clear. So black plays uh, queen c6 here. And now um, white can do um, uh, many different things here. Um, F7 is the obvious one. Uh, you know, that's definitely the, the human way to play. Um, a nice little idea is if King G, uh, yeah, if King G7, the engine was saying Rook E6 in this position um, with, uh, I don't know, threats of something like Knight E8 check, for example, discovered attack. Um, incredible, huh? But um, uh, yeah, so after F7, Queen A4 was one line. Rook c7, uh, king g7, just getting out of the way there because we're threatening uh, rook e8 check, king g7, f8 then. Um, and then uh, king g7, knight e8, well, knight f6, or even just knight d6 with a draw by repetition. This was just uh, ending up equal. What just shocked me really was uh, that the engine sort of thought that, uh, well, this white position is just so good. Um, actually, I can, just, um, I can just play positionally and just carry on. So playing g5, <laughs> h4, Rook one e five, um, b six. Uh, oh no, even more crazy. Uh, H three, and then just king f two. Bishop takes a two, king e three. Yeah, I mean I can't make uh, head or tail of it really. Um, I don't know why this king's uh, moving. Well, I suppose the king's moving into e three to get out of here. But why, you know, why this should be surviving somehow? But b six f seven, 
bishop d5, king d2, b5, bishop a5. Yeah, um, obviously, uh, if rook a5, we've got rook e8 check, king g7, rook h8, and we can go f8, queen, uh, bishop f7, rook f7, king g8, draw agreed, you know, from the engines. Well, I mean, I guess that white's always got ideas like rook e7 with perpetuals here. But I mean, I think, you know, looking at that, you know, um, can't remember all the lines, can't really fathom all the lines, but I think it's pretty clear that after rook e1, to be honest, white's for choice. Uh, I think you just have to find this idea of f5 to f6, you know, which also carries the threat of mate, as we saw uh, quickly. And then basically your quid's in, because I think this is really easy for black to mess up. Um, yeah, somehow Janowski just went wrong here. Rook f7 and then d5. Pretty natural. I mean, it's this, uh, you know, I've, I said about Tal, check and... Uh, uh, you know, check or take stuff, and it's very natural to do this because I think what Janowski saw was, I get a check, I get uh, d5 opening up the line of this bishop, and now I get the rook to g7, and I can play rook to e1. And uh, at first sight, this looks, you know, very strong. You're sort of thinking, well, you know, I've got all sorts of moves now. I, I, I can go rook e7, I can play f5, I can play a rook into e7. Surely I'm going to have at least a draw here. And you know, to be honest, I completely agree with Janowski. I would think that certainly too. But somehow, slightly miraculously, this turns out to be completely lost for uh, for white. And the big reason is um, um, the weakness of the white king and the weakness of this pawn. So queen c6 was played by um, um, Lasker. And then I guess here that um, uh, Lyonovsky just sort of panicked, really. Um, the big problem with bishop d4 um, is that, um, well, black can even do something like queen a4, for example, and attack this one. And, um, you know, it's kind of... It's kind of quite hard. I mean, the queen's also threatening to come into c2 to deliver mate there. So Janowski played b4, and to be honest, you know, you could just have taken on b4 here, but um, Lasker just played the move rook d8, and, you know, he's just looking to destroy this knight, and then, well, this, this bishop will be hanging, and, you know, and then afterwards the white king's in real danger. It's just, um, it's somehow, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I find Janowski really unlucky, to be honest, in this position, that this turned out to be so bad. He had one way of uh, of making it and um, and uh, a slight misstep there, very natural misstep, you know, opening up the line of the bishop and he just ends up being completely lost. So we went bishop d4 here. Um, I think that was the idea. I mean, you play b4, you block the line of the, uh, of the queen there. So if the queen comes to a4, not attacking the bishop. It's clever, right? But takes, takes, and then Lasker found this uh, this great move, bishop h1. And um, yeah, you're just threatening queen g2 checkmate. You can't escape with king f2 because we just check you and check you back. And it just turns out to be really impossible to defend. Um, uh, rook e2 um, looks natural uh, defending this. And you might think, well, is this going to be so bad? Queen d6, I'd have bishop c5. But um, yeah, this queen is just amazing. We go queen c1 check, king f2, queen f4, and the whole white position collapses. You know, rook c7, we go uh, queen takes d6. We're just taking everything somehow. Just then you got masses of material up and, and the white king is still weak and, uh, and checkable, you know, with, uh, with queen b4. Um, total collapse there, but really unlucky, you know, I think, because, uh, yeah, I was quite shocked really at how quickly the, the white position collapsed there. Um, yeah, this move queen c6, you know, double, double attack. That's what queens are great at, double attacks. Queen c5 and this threat of bishop h1 you know um and it's all finished but if um if uh, Janowski had found the move rookie one would have been absolutely amazing really and uh, you know i mean along the way you know it's clear that Janowski was you know was clearly on top here i mean we had this uh, this opportunity here knight takes e7 that would have just uh, won and actually even in the opening um obviously uh, um after c6 this move uh, e takes d6 queen e2 and king f8 f5 would have been really strong but I think, you know, I think you see here, um, you know, the reasons why Janowski was an awkward opponent for Lasker. And, you know, I, I really maintain this despite the result of those matches, uh, you know, um, um, which, uh, you know, Janowski lost very heavily to Lasker. I mean, before then and even during the matches, you know, um, Lasker was having a lot of difficulties. You know, Janowski was awkward for him in the opening and in the middle game, confusing him, putting under pressure. But... Somehow, yeah, you know, um, what, what Janowski showed, I think, in this game was, uh, you know, just not the best finishing technique, 
Um, and uh, I think, you know, I think as Lasca got stronger and stronger, he, he really did get better and better at surviving somehow. You know, uh, you, it's not that you're saying that the defence is absolutely perfect, you know, that uh, there are plenty of mistakes and uh, Janowski had his winning chances. But uh, yeah, I mean, Lasca was very good at, um, at never giving um, obvious chances to win, you know, at keeping the game going at making it feel, you know, difficult for the opponent to, uh, to put him away. And um, yeah, I think, you know, in this game, Cambridge Springs 1904, you see uh, Janowski sort of uh, falling to that and uh, and that's really what happened in uh, in the in the later matches as well so um, yeah you know but um, incredible game a really amazing game and uh, well I think I'm definitely going to treasure um, let's have a look I'm definitely going to treasure which moment was it just heading back there just want to put it on the board um, definitely going to treasure um, this moment, knight g8 and then queen g5. I don't think I've ever been so amazed by a move as, uh, as that one. That's a, an amazing engine find. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I also enjoyed very much the, uh, the engine analysis of, um, of, um, of this move, um, rook a1. You know, just uh, quite incredible that you, can, uh, that you can get away with this. You know, just, uh, just um, queen for, uh, for peace and three pawns. And you're just calmly you know just bringing in the reserve cementing your position uh, if you want to do that you know you can force uh, uh, a draw by perpetual by playing f7 f6 f7 quickly but you could also just maintain the position and see whether black makes a mistake you know really really incredible stuff there so there we are, a bit of a longer video, but I hope you agree it was uh, it was worth it. Uh, you know, there really are some amazing uh, Janowski against uh, Lasker games, and I'm sure we're going to have a look at just uh, at least one more. Um, you know, maybe one from the World Championship match uh, again. You know, just uh, because uh, yeah, they had a lovely clash of styles. You know, uh, Janowski just very free flowing, uh, attacking initiative all the time. And Lasker, very pragmatic, practical, you know, uh, somehow that, that amazing ability to somehow work his way through stuff and, uh, and survive, you know, uh, very Magnus Carlsen-esque, really, uh, you know, the sort of skills Lasker had. So, um, so there we are. If you enjoyed it, then uh, if you're still with me at the end of this video, then uh, why not give a like, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my new book, Reengineering the Chess Classics, which, well... Shows lots of stuff like this, classic games, and then all these amazing engine discoveries that, you know, just show just how amazingly rich in content those games were and, and how good the, uh, the classic players were. And uh, otherwise, thanks for, uh, for watching, for being part of this channel, and uh, hope to see you at the next videos. Thanks for watching.